guys, work here. Welcome to Applied Ballistics. So we are kind of on a sub gun kick lately. Uh, if you didn't know, I picked up a Grand Power Strybog and we've been really interested to see how that uh, in its relatively new import status compares to some of the other guns that fit in the same segment. So Aaron from Applied Ballistics here was awesome enough to let us come in to the shop and test out some of the competition for the Strybog. So Aaron, can you tell us kind of what, what other things we've got here? Well, sure. We decided to use a couple of our rentals. Uh, so what I've got here is we've got the Ruger PC carbine in 9mm using Glock magazines, the CZ Scorpion, and then the SIG MPX. All right. All in 9mm as well. Yep. Yeah, we wanted to stick with 9mm, um, first of all, because I'm cheap, and secondly, because we, we want to kind of stick with that family for now. Uh, we've also got Builder Shooter here. Uh, the guy that got me stuck into Strybogs. So we're going to go out on the range, and what we're going to do is we've got uh, three tests that we're going to run these through. Um, I, wait, I don't know what order we're going to do them in yet, but we'll figure it out. So yeah. first we've got a dueling tree rack that we're going to run. We're going to run up one side, we're going to do a mag swap, and then we're going to go to the other side, and we're going to time each one, of these, uh, each one of these runs. All three of us are going to do them with all four of the competing rifles and pistol. We're gonna get those times and we're gonna compare them at the end. Next up, we're gonna do a USPSA classifier called El Presidente. So uh, we'll explain it a little bit more once we're out there on the range, but, but essentially it's two shots on three silhouette targets, a reload, and then two shots on all three silhouette targets again. Uh, so again, we're gonna all three do those with all four competing rifles and pistol and we're gonna take the times on that. Now with that one, we're gonna get a little bit more information because being a USPSA classifier, we actually have times that um, mean something that we can compare to. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is we're going to do an accuracy test out to about 25 yards which e with each one of the rifles and pistol. Now we are running each one of these rifles and pistol with a red dot on top to try to kind of um, level the playing field a little bit. Uh, yes, that will probably take sight options out of the equation, but let's be honest, a subgun is begging for a dot anyway, so you shouldn't be using irons on them. <laughs> uh, so with that, let's go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and get ready, and we'll see you on the range. Okay, guys, so after much setup, we finally, I think we finally got everything set up and zeroed in, right? Yeah, everything's up. So. Okay, Close so down. what we're gonna do, we're gonna run a single target out for each one of us. We're gonna run all four guns. We'll pull the target back, and we'll take a look and see how it is. Top left is gonna be the Strybog. Top right is gonna be the MPX. Bottom left is going to be the Scorpion, and bottom right is going to be the PC-9. So we're going to go ahead and run them, and we'll see how accurate we can do. Uh, this is the accuracy test. We've got four rifles and a pistol. Remember, the Strybog is a pistol, so we're running with an 8-inch barrel as opposed to a 16-inch barrel on everything else. In honesty, eh, that shouldn't really matter as far as... Sorry, I'm kind of covering up Builder there with my head. My head's gigantic when I'm this close to the camera. Uh, it's big anyway. But, <laughs> so... Uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to run them out. We're going to run all four, each one of us, and then we'll see what our results are. Let's have at it.
just finished up with the um, accuracy testing and well, the end result is I am not a very accurate um, shooter at all, uh, not compared to these guys. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to do the El Presidente classifier from USPSA. So the idea here is we're starting, we're doing um, PCC rules. So it's going to be facing forward, stock on, or stock or um, in the case of the Strybog, we're going to run the brace on our belt. We're going to do two shots. I can't point. We're going to do two shots on each one of the targets. We're going to do a reload, and then we're going to do two shots on each one of the targets. Now, we are doing the reload off of a barrel. We don't have mag pouches that fit all of the magazines that we're running, so we wanted to kind of have a um, an average, like we wanted to get everything on a level playing field. So we're put, going to put the mags on the barrel. We're going to do a reload from the barrel. And that's pretty much it. So we're doing two shots each, reload, two shots each. We will be timing, which means we'll probably have to go grab the timer and we'll see how we do. Shooter ready. Stand by. So we didn't get everything finished that we wanted to get finished, time constraints and all, um, but we did get enough finished that we've got some results for you and uh, we can go over them now. So first up, first up we'll go over the accuracy test. Okay, so here's my first one. So on all of these, we've got the Strybog on the top left, MPX top right, the Scorpion on the bottom left, and the PC9 on the bottom right. So for me, um, the most accurate was the MPX. I had a flyer down here because uh, I suck at shooting. But <laughs> but the what? That's tell the, the truth. That was that was the trigger that got you. That was the trigger. But um, I'm used to well, every single one of these has probably around like a seven pound trigger. I'd say on we the can other measure three. it. I'm not sure. But nah, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna calibrate it, finger guess it seven okay. pounds. And the MPX is like four and a half to five, yeah, it's, it's I would guess. Lighter. It's pretty light with a much shorter reset and I went off the reset and bang. So, the but the MPX group is significantly smaller for me. Uh, next up would be actually the PC9 and that was, the PC9 was really the standout to me as far as what it gets you for the price because those go in for like what, 400 bucks? Uh, 500. 500? Yeah. Okay. So, 500 bucks and it was the second accurate, most accurate for me. Um, followed by the Strybog and then the Scorpion. Uh, the Scorpion was 
So the PC9 was the highest surprise for me as far as what you get goes. The Scorpion was kind of the biggest letdown for me. Now, the Scorpion is not a bad gun. No. But I just didn't shoot it as well as some of the other ones. Personal preference, like, it just doesn't fit me as well. Yeah, there's there's some things I run into. We'll get to mm -hmm. that when we talk about the individual guns that I run into with the Scorpion that don't work well for me as well. But. So next up, uh, we're going to... Yeah, we'll do Builders. He uh, he had to leave a little bit earlier, so we'll trash him. No, I'm kidding. So here's Builders groupings. So um, again, Strybog, MPX, Scorpion, and PC9. His tightest group was with the MPX, followed actually pretty closely by both the Strybog and the PC9. I would put the Strybog just in front of the PC9. Yeah, I believe like, so. Like just barely. Without putting, a, without putting a ruler to it, it looks like it's slightly small. Yeah, right. So. And then the Scorpion on him, he had the same issue as I did with Scorpion. I don't know what this little guy is. He's got a weird little hole there. That's actually, these are all the way at the back of the base. Sometimes you get a little splash off the ah, steel. Okay, there you go. So, so he did the best with the MPX, Strybog, then PC9, then Scorpion. So next up, we've got Aaron here. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about what you got? So my Titus were probably almost a tie between the MPX and the PC9 again. Mm -hmm. Uh, my loosest group was probably the Strybog, but yep. we've got two very distinct groups here, so that easily could have been a couple pulled shots by me. And then the Scorpion was a little bit looser, but really none of them were bad. I mean, they, no. they all shot fine for me. Yeah, and I mean, that's saying a lot. The Strybog's running, again, an 8-inch barrel, yeah. and everything else is running a 16-inch barrel. That just kind of goes to show you that that extra 8 inches of barrel, not, not doing a, a whole lot of difference. Especially not at 25 yards. No. So if yeah, it were up to me, it. I'd be running an MPX with a 10-inch barrel. I just don't want to mess with the with the pistol or that's, the SBR. That is fair. All right, so that's it for the accuracy. So next up, we ran the El Presidente drill. So the El Presidente, as we explained, are two shots on three targets. Reload two shots on three targets. Um, we went ahead and did this USPSA style, including hit factor. So we can go over some of those hit factors now. We uh, worked them out. We did alter the the stage slightly, and one of the things that, that was done. So we loaded off of a table instead of off of a belt. Mm -hmm. Primarily because with the variety of guns we had here and not everybody having a USPSA rig, we didn't want the you know, the, the mag holders and, and the belt to be a limiting factor. So we chose to do it so that it was the same across the board for all, all four guns. Right, so technically these are a little bit lower than they would be probably compared straight to USPSA, but for comparison reasons, this is how we did it. So for this test, they're straight up across the yeah. board. Honestly, I don't know the table start would make a huge difference anyway, as far yeah. as actual time. So, All right. So, um, we did have to stop running the PC-9 halfway through. It's no fault of the PC-9. Um, these, The PC-9, the MPX, and the Scorpion are all rental guns. Sometimes rental guns get dirty. So the PC-9 yeah. was a little bit dirty tonight. And We started doing experiencing some failure to ejects. I think it was probably just gunk, and we didn't have time to clean it. We actually ran into some problems with the MPX during accuracy testing. We did. Um, that one had too much buildup around the firing pin, and it wasn't getting good primer strikes, and that was a very quick fix. I just had to run, you know, actually an Allen wrench down the firing pin channel <laughs> uh, to get some of the gunk out, and it ran fine after that. So it's just kind of a nature of the beast thing with, with rental guns. Yep, but. yep. But at the same time, I'm not going to knock them because Aaron here is awesome enough to let us use those rental guns. So, okay. So for Aaron here, who is a... a pretty good shooter um so with the scorpion he got a hit factor of 7.52 uh so it, it also with hit factors the higher the hit factor the better the overall score of the firearm um, if you're not familiar with uspsa hit factor it's essentially points per second is yeah. what it boils down to you take the number of points on the stage divide by time it, and it's points per second yeah so. okay so uh the scorpion 7.52 the mpx 9.46 the Strybog at 7.25, and the PC-9 at 8.50. So in order, we've got MPX, PC-9, Scorpion, and Strybog. Um, what do you think were some of the factors that would place them in that order? Well, certainly one of the factors for me is going to be that I run an MPX as a PCC in USPSA, as well as Steel Challenge. So I'm very familiar with the platform. I have a lot of practice and experience mm -hmm. with that gun. This one is our rental gun here. It's not my personal one, so it's set up a little bit differently. But functionally, it's not much different. So I'm more familiar with the reload and with the controls and that sort of thing. Right. So that's certainly going to be a factor that, that helps me with that particular gun. Uh, the standout actually was the PC-9, which is the one that I'm probably least familiar with Yeah. as far as, you know, shooting and controls and, and how it all works. And it actually ended up being, you know, my, my second place gun, which yeah. was a little surprising. But I was the only one that was able to get a complete run in 
right without malfunction issues. So not only that, the PC nine also um, has the least uh, friendly mag release here because you cannot, you can't do a mag release at all aided by your firing hand. It's all in your support hand here. So you have to strip the mag of a PC nine versus. Everything be, else on here. To be fair, mm -hmm. the the MPX was the only one that I had a mag drop free. The rest of them I had, I yes. had to strip. Yeah, so, you had to strip all of them. So that was a big issue for me as well as far as just overall time. One of the reasons El Presidente is such a good test mm -hmm. for, for something like this is that it, it measures so many different things. You know, time on the initial target. You've got multiple splits, multiple transitions, and a reload all in one classifier. So it really does give you the opportunity to, to factor in a lot of different things. Yep. And the reload is always kind of the limiting factor with PCC because it's slower than it is with a handgun mm -hmm. across the board, right? And and for me, especially with the experience I had with the MPX, the reload was much quicker with it than it was with the other three. Yes. So the slowest reload I had was with the Strybok, the the small the small yep. Magwell, you know, and yep. it's it's a gun that I've never shot before today. Right. So it was it was by and far and the mag didn't drop free. Right. You got to strip the so. mag, which hopefully will be modifying sometime to make that better. Oh, I'm sure someone will make a magwell for it at some point, too. Oh, I'm just going to clean things up. <laughs> all right. That's, no, not acceptable. Um, all right. So my hit factors. So for the Scorpion was a 5.36. The MPX was a 7.35. And the Strybog was a 6.16. So my order went MPX, Strybog, and Scorpion. Um, for me, uh, obviously, of these, the MPX is... You guys are kind of seeing the trend here with the MPX, how it's ending up on top. But you have to remember, how much is an MPX MSRP? An MPX, it, uh, we sell one off the floor typically mm -hmm. at $1,700. Okay. So you're talking two to three times the retail price of any of the other three guns yep. here. Yeah, the so. um, the Scorpion rifles go in right around 1000 I think. Yeah. Uh, the Strybog, that was an $800 gun. And then the uh, PC-9 here goes for about 500 Yeah. So you can kind of see the trend. At money can actually buy you a little bit better gun. Um, for me, the big thing with me, with my the way that mine went, with the Scorpion being the bottom one, the Scorpion mag release is really hard for me. Um, it just, it's not my, you guys know I've got little girl hands, and I can't reach the mag release with my support hand. I have the same issue. <laughs> right. So. so I've got to, I have to both grab and strip the mag, and the mag release just isn't really conducive to that. As you squeeze the mag release, you're actually pulling the mag back into the gun a little bit and creating more friction. So that's where I kind of hung up on that well, one. Well, if you look at the mag releases of all four of these guns, mm -hmm. the the MPX is straight AR. Yep. You know, it's it's a mag release button you use with your trigger finger in front of the, the magwell. Yep. As is the Strybok. Yes. The Scorpion, you push forward a lever mm -hmm. instead of a push button or something like that. And again, it has to be one that you can reach with your finger. And then with the Ruger, it has to be done with the offhand. There's absolutely literally no way to do right. it with the firing hand. It's just too far forward. I don't care how you know, mutantly big your hands are, it's right. not going to work with that gun, so you have to do it with your support hand. Right. So, so yeah, as far as mag changes go, the Ruger's the weakest, I think, mm -hmm. followed by the Scorpion, and then these two are pretty much the same. Yep. The only difference with these two for me was the, the drop free versus not. Yes. So. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and then Builder, his uh, hit factor on the Scorpion was a 4.36, MPX was a 5.76, the Strybog was a 5.46, so he also had MPX, Strybog, Scorpion. Um, so that's it as far as what we actually got through. We didn't get the dueling tree, um, which really, I mean, that would have been just kind of icing on the cake anyway. It's I measuring a lot of the same things as, as it is. The, it is. Uh, the classifier is. We got a lot of the results that we were going to get on the tree with the classifier. So with that being said, um, what are your thoughts? Just a quick little one-minute rundown on each of these guys for you. Well, we'll start with the Ruger. For what it's worth, we have this gun as a rental, and mm -hmm. it does run really well. We don't typically have issues with it. It, it happened today. It, it is what it is. Uh, but for the price, and I've talked to several people. I know quite a few folks that actually run this in Steel Challenge. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a problem for Steel Challenge with the mag release because you're running five round, and if you have a few misses, seven or eight round strings. Right. So you're not in a position where you have to reload under time. It's a little harder to run in USPSA if you're going to do that sort of thing. Yes. For planking and stuff like that, not really an issue unless you're doing speed reloads for, for some other reason. Um, so I think that's probably the weakest thing. Um, it also, I, I tend to notice a little bit more recoil hop on that one than the mm -hmm. others. You know, it, it it's probably the traditional stock layout where, you know, the borax is a little different, that kind right. of thing. It just, it tends to have a little bit more recoil. Something else I can mention is that it, it as long as, as well as the Strybog, didn't have a break in the Scorpion and the MPX. Do. Yes. The MPX by far the most aggressive break. Mm -hmm. It's the factory one. It, it hasn't been changed. It's right. a stock gun, but 
but definitely the most aggressive one. When it comes to the Scorpion, um, again, the, the biggest limitation for me with the Scorpion has got to be ergonomics. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the grip is large for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's my understanding it can be changed. I haven't done a lot of research into that. Uh, but the mag release is a little foreign, and the safety, you know, it works like an AR safety right. uh, if your thumb can reach it, but mine's a little short on the yep. short side for that one. Uh, so I struggle with that. And then because it has kind of a raised upper rail here, you have to use either a low slung optic, which we didn't have today, which might have been right. a bit of a limitation with that one too. Uh, and with a low slung optic, it's hard to do it with non-folding sides and stuff like that. So there's right. there's some limitations there. Uh, the Strybog is similar in the in the sight thing. You know, the, the stock's a little lower than the yep. upper rail. So if you're going to run irons, it, it, it complicates things a little mm -hmm. with the red dot. And I agree with what you said earlier. These guns are begging for red dots. I mean, it's yep. really it's really where it's at. I want to point something out really quick on the Strybog. Ah, see, you know, I was not sights. aware of those. So yeah. that's pretty handy. And it looks like they co-witness. They well do co-witness. Yep. So hey, that's actually fairly handy and something I didn't know. Yeah. Um, the Strybog, again, the, the weakest thing on it for me was the mag, mm -hmm. mag change. Right? Yep. Uh, the gun itself was a little short, but being a pistol, that's to be expected. Right. It doesn't have the same adjustability on the back end mm -hmm. that, like the MPX does. It's not as big a deal for me because I prefer a short stock. I tend to shoot in more of a squared up position. Yep. Uh, but some folks, particularly those with longer arms than I have, might might like something a little longer. Right. Uh, the MPX, well, I mean, I run one in competition for a reason, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I think the, the biggest advantage of it has got to be the gas operating system. Yes. Lower recoil uh, and that sort of thing. But the... The other thing for me is the Timney trigger. Uh, mm -hmm. as, a comp as a competition shooter, I've, I've grown accustomed to really nice triggers. Yep. And it's really hard to go back, you know? So I feel like I'm mashing the trigger on, on the other guns right. because of the extra weight. Uh, it didn't end up affecting my accuracy that much and really my time that much, but mm -hmm. it certainly doesn't feel as comfortable to me. Uh, the weakest part for the SIG is actually similar to what it is for the Scorpion for me. The factory grip ends up being a little long for mm -hmm. me to get to the, to the safety and, and to the, actually the mag release. Mm -hmm. I've got to kind of stretch. Now, it uses a standard AR grip, so it's easy to change. Right. You can use a standard grip and, and reduce that distance because it uses one of the one of the extended ones because that's what okay. most people prefer. Right. It's just not what I prefer, right? The other thing for me on the MPX that I, that I changed on mine was I don't like the cheek weld I get with this stock. It's kind of thin, mm -hmm. you know? They do that because it's a side folding stock. Right. I don't really understand why they put a thin side pulling stock on a gun marketed to competitive shooters because it really doesn't no. offer any advantage from a competitive standpoint. It's handy if you want a truck gun, but I don't think it was seventeen hundred dollar PCC as, as a truck gun. No, you know. So for me, I'd rather see a, a full size stock on yep. it. Yep. So, um, but again, so strengths. I think you get a lot of value for what you spend on the Ruger. Yep. Uh, the Strybog is. I, I liked it better than the Scorpion, and it costs less. Yeah. So that's actually a pretty pretty big thing for me. And then, of course, the, the MPX is the one I like the most, but it's also the one you got to pry your wallet open the furthest to get. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it I is. I agree. So. Okay, so my thoughts on these fall uh, very similar in line. I'll, I'll kind of go through again. So the PC carving, um, this to me, I think the limiting factors on this are just inherent to its purpose. The purpose for that isn't the same purpose as the other three guns. This is kind of the epitome of what you would think of as a truck gun for yeah, me. Yeah. Like it's, um, so for those of you who don't know, the PC Carbine is a takedown model. Um, really cool, takes up half the space mm -hmm. that any of the, uh, yeah, with the Strybog, <laughs> it's probably pretty close. Uh, yeah, the, the Strybog's a little bit shorter. Um, but it has an eight inch barrel. <laughs> right, it's got an eight inch barrel. So. And it doesn't take Glock mags. <laughs> um, Fair. But. This is just, it, it's a little bit different. This is more along, like I would, this is almost like a survivalist type of, like closer to that market. There's a couple of different tear down or take down models that right. are kind of that, but it's not aimed towards the competition or self-defense or that kind of market. It's Think of it as a 1022 takedowns big brother. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's the 1022 takedowns big brother. So um, I, I really like it. It's It was, one of the easiest to shoot accurately. It really was. Yeah. It's it's nice, it's smooth, it settles really easily, and it might be, I don't know, due, just due to the design, but I, I really like it. I wouldn't mind having one. There's some interesting accessories for it, too. One, yeah. of the, one of the weakest things on that one for me is the trigger. It's got kind yes. of a heavy trigger. Yeah. But the trouble is, is you get into trigger aftermarket triggers for it. Like, mm -hmm. well, Quartzen makes an aftermarket trigger for it, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. over 200 bucks. And right. It's a $500 rifle, so yep. not a lot of people are looking to put a $250 trigger into a $500 rifle. Right. So, 
Next up, we've got the Scorpion here. Um, now, for those of you who remember, the Scorpion was actually in the running against the Strybog for me as far as what to get, and most of you wanted me to get the Scorpion. Sorry, guys, I didn't. Um, <laughs> so, my take on the Scorpion, I do, I both like and don't like the ergonomics of the Scorpion. As Aaron said, we both have smaller hands and the length of pull is a little bit big and that the grip is just, it's, it's weird for a CZ. It's awkwardly shaped. It doesn't have this, the kind of classic ergonomics that you would think of a CZ having. Most of the time, CZs fit very nicely into your hand, and this one just doesn't. That might just be our hand size, but the hand size also is what caused the problem with me with the mag release. So the mag release is up here, and you have to, you either push it with your trigger finger or grab it as you grab and strip a mag. Now the problem is that grabbing and stripping mags, it's not, most of the mag releases that are sitting here, like in this kind of uh, marketed gun, you would have kind of a rocker mag, like an AK style. Right. Which might work, because you can grab another mag. They, those guys love smacking mags out of there. <laughs> this one won't work like that. So you have to either push and try to pull at the same time, and it's just a little tight. The safety on the Scorpion is much better than the safety on the PC-9, just because the PC-9 is like a traditional hunting rifle safety. It's a crossbow safety like a Remington A7. Right. Yeah. Now, that being said, I don't prefer the Scorpion safety. Uh, it does jab me a little bit in the hand. Um, I tend to grip up really high, even on rifles, and it pokes me in the hand a little bit, and it's pretty stiff to put back on. It's actually pretty nice to take off. It's yeah. stiff to put on, and I don't like safeties that are too stiff to put on. I know that people are like, oh, I'd rather err on the side of safety off. That terrifies me. So, <laughs> like, like, so, um, but it's, the recoil impulse was pretty nice. It does have a break on it, uh, but it settled down. It stayed relatively on target. We were using a high dot on it, um, which might have caused, I don't know if it caused issue, but it did give you kind of a weird cheek weld. Yeah, it, 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 it was sort of like, you know. It was the, a chin weld. The dot on top of the AR carry handle kind of thing. It didn't, yeah. it didn't work as well as I would have liked. But. Yep. But it was still nice. Um, I That being said, I'm glad I went with the Strybog. So now the Strybog. Um, so the Strybog, every time I shoot this thing, I like it a little bit more. It's very AR in, its, in a lot of how it functions. Obviously, the controls are AR-based. The safety is AR-based. The trigger group itself is AR-based. The mag release is AR-based. Uh, as Aaron said, the mags don't drop free, though, which is an issue. Um, and I've seen that uh, come up on some of the forums here and there, people complaining about it. I'll probably look into a way to fix that. Um, maybe you can polish the internals. Actually, I think it's... Yeah, it's polymer, so polishing that's probably not going to do a whole lot. It'd probably be more sanding. Yeah. But... Yeah, but maybe we could open it up. Serialized receiver team, yeah, so. Right. But you know, Dan, our uh -huh. manager, runs a CZ in, in USPSA. Yep. These mags don't fall free his due, so I, I need to ask him. I'm betting he probably did something yeah, like that. Yeah, because this is a polymer base. Because Dan, Dan's our manager and our gunsmith, so he's mm -hmm. more comfortable sanding on things like serialized receiver. Right. right. Uh, you know, well, he's got a little more experience with it. A little it. bit. And he runs his very, very well in mm -hmm. competition. He's, I mean, his reloads are as fast as, or faster than mine are with a with an MPX. So yeah. It can be done. I have no doubt the same thing can happen with Strybog. Yep. I just haven't had the practice with it. So. <laughs> right. So the Strybog, um, it doesn't have a break. So uh, the recoil was noticeably a little bit more. So no break. And it's just, it's a smaller gun. Uh, it's an 8-inch barrel, it's blowback, so you're going to get a little bit more recoil. That being said, it settled down really quick. I actually, I felt like my follow-ups were a little bit quicker, and that might, now that I'm looking at it, that might be the dot positioning. With that low dot and a tight cheek weld, it's easier to get back on target a little bit quicker than with a chin weld. But, um, but again, with the Strybog, though, the cool thing about this thing is because it's a pistol, I mean, we were talking about how small the PC carbine is, this thing is just a tiny little gun, mm -hmm. and I love that about this thing. Next up, the MPX. I really like the MPX, <laughs> like really like it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. The MPX of all of these is my favorite. The recoil impulse is nice and smooth. The brake does its job. The fact that it's gas operated really helps. Um, mags drop free. The trigger is amazing. Um, I, as far as these go, I would probably place triggers. MPX, Strybog, and I have a really hard time telling the difference between yeah, the Scorpion were, and the PC9. They're, they were both heavy and gritty. Yep. They weren't they weren't good triggers. Yeah, they're I think 
Yeah, they're both polymer triggers. So, I mean, you're going to get a little bit of that polymer squeeze, polymer squish in there. The MPX has by far the better trigger. Well, to be fair, the MPX trigger is actually made by Timney. Sig now puts it in yes. as a factory trigger. Right. That wasn't the case as recently as last year. That was relatively new. That, so. That's true. That's true. But again, as we were saying too, the MPX is a $1,700 gun. It's yeah. over twice as much as the Strybog, three times as much as the PC9, and one and a half, uh, yeah, one and a half times the price of the Scorpion. So, but it's one of those situations where you really do get what you paid for. I would say the difference between the Strybog and the Scorpion, and then the Scorpion, the, the MPX, like the MPX is just skyrockets above the Scorpion. Right. In my opinion. Well, you know, when we look at the numbers on the class, mm -hmm. it's no surprise that I shot the MPX better because right. it's what I shoot. Yep. Um, but both you and, uh, you know, our other builder, shooter, yeah. builder uh, shot it better than you did the Strybog. Mm -hmm. You both own and have shot those. Now, I don't know how much you guys have shot those yet. Not much. Okay. So it might not be <laughs> as big a difference. But like I said, for me, it was it's kind of a no-brainer. Yep. That's what I'm familiar with. Uh, but for you both to then have it shoot the best, I mean, that that's not without merit. Right. Yep. So. So well done, Sig. Bring the price down so I can afford one. <laughs> they, are, they are proud of their equipment. but They are. All right, guys. Well, that is pretty much it. That's the rundown of our first subgun shootout. So if you liked this, if you uh, if you liked our results, if you liked what we did, go ahead and let us know in the comments down below uh, if you'd like to see another one of these. And if you do want to see another one of these, which guns you want to see? We can pretty much get anything. I see a couple right behind us here. See? We do need to give the Ruger another chance. So. And we will. <laughs> All right. So, guys, thank you very much for hanging out with us. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you found this video useful, go ahead and like and subscribe down below. We appreciate every one of you. And until next time, do your research, get informed, and get to work. Stand by. Fire. Stand by. Fire. Winner right. Two empty guns.